Hello and welcome to this tutorial about 5G main new technologies. I will cover in short and in brief some of the main technologies that is being existed in the new 5G technology and as compared to 4G. And we will talk briefly in some of these um, services and in new features and how it will enhance the data services. I will intentionally speak faster um, just to make the time for this tutorial uh, shorter um, uh, otherwise we will take long time. To start with uh, 5G services are uh, basically depend on three main pillars uh, enhanced mobile broadband, URLCC or uh, ultra reliable low latency and massive machine type communication. And within those uh, main pillars there's a lot of technologies are located between them uh, and a lot of services that are expected to be delivered by the 5G. Uh, some of those are the HD videos, high quality uh, as compared to the normal qualities of videos, uh, 720p or, or whatever, to a new one like uh, 1080 uh, HD videos, smart grid uh, services, online surgeries, or medical services online, automated or self-automated driving cars, intelligent factories, smart cities, augmented and virtual reality cloud infrastructure and smart homes and even the education system will be changed and basically a lot of uh, these industries uh, will be disrupted um, by how the 5G uh, mobile technology will change uh, these industries uh, toward online dependent and internet and cloud uh, usage. Uh, one important point to be uh, highlighted that uh, two of those main pillars will uh, require a 5G core as later when we speak about the 5G architecture there is two uh, kind of architecture um, to be deployed in any network one is standalone and one is non-standalone and we will have uh, different tutorials with more details about uh, uh, both of these um, of this um, architecture uh, but basically enhanced mobile broadband uh, are n n not required a 5G core network as with non-standalone you can have a very high speed uh, up to uh, 2 gigahertz or 1.5 gigahertz as been um, as been practically tested uh, in many operators. Uh, low latency and uh, machine type communication um, in many ways will uh, will require a 5G uh, core network services. Uh, to achieve uh, uh, these services, uh, 5G will, uh, our 5G technologies uh, will have some evolution from previously uh, deployed technology, which is 4G, uh, to enhance some of these technologies, and um, some technologies are, are brand new. Uh, beam forming, for example, is, no, is not a new technology. It's been used um, uh, with 4G, uh, with more than... Uh, uh, two by two, I mean, in, in four by four layer and 16 by 16, uh, it has been used and tested and practically implemented in many operators uh, being forming. Uh, while other uh, features like slicing uh, is, is a brand new feature uh, that has never been existed in the 4G, uh, and it will also not be existed in, in non standalone 5G. So it will be um, a long journey when you have a 5G core network and uh, many services and then you will slice your network uh, to different segments uh, based on the services that you are supposed or expected uh, to uh, offer for uh, your customers. A new spectrum, a, a very big and diversified spectrum um, are expected to be utilized in 5G starting from 300 megahertz up to 90 gigahertz where the millimeter waves are uh, located in the, in the upper layers and we will talk about it in, in, in soon um, in some more details. Uh, massive MIMO. Massive MIMO is one of the main uh, technologies that uh, 5G is depending on and below Massive MIMO there is two uh, main two technologies are depending on one is beam forming uh, where you can dedicate uh, uh, your beams uh, either horizontally or vertically uh, to get enhanced deep coverage with a very narrow band uh, beams or narrow beams um, that will enhance your coverage and also will enhance your capacity and the other one is a spatial multiplexing uh, where practically as for the current uh, uh, um, 
solutions that for example Huawei is providing with its AAU 5613 uh, up to 16 layers in the downlink and four or eight layers in the uplink as multiplexing and and it's massive MIMO supporting 60 for the 64 d 64 transmission uh, within their current AEU 5613. Another technology is a scalable numerology. Uh, numerology is a new term that has never been used uh, previously in, in LTE and and people who work in, in LTE is not familiar uh, with what is numerology and numerology will basically uh, depend on changing the subcarrier spacing uh, on the frequency as uh, for example the current subcarrier spacing on the LTE system is 15 kilohertz uh, fixed and you cannot change it as compared for the for the cyclic perfects where you can have a normal cyclic perfects or extended cyclic perfects but the subcarrier spacing is fixed and you can't change it but in in, four, in 5G we will have um, a different numerology uh, 15 kilohertz 30 kilohertz and 60 kilohertz and even 120 kilohertz and this will happen in a higher layer uh, frequencies and we will talk about it also in, in more details soon uh, network slicing um, that you will able only to work on when you have a 5g core network uh, that you can basically slice or segment your network to different services uh, based on what you giving to your customers so so for example customers who are working in needing uh, need um, um, to support a, a very massive uh, or a big numbers of handset and in, 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 in low speed is different from uh, a network requirement that you need to have uh, mobile broadband enhanced, enhanced mobile broadband and very high speed though you can uh, giving different uh, services and different segments and different parameters and the network slicing that's supposed to happen very soon in the future when you have a 5G core uh, network much wider spectrum as, as, as we have just said uh, uh, um, as compared to the LTE where normally it's it's using in the 1.8 megahertz uh, 1.8 gigahertz that is the most common one uh, millimeter wave um, it's a new term uh, that was not existed in the 4G and we didn't uh, work on this uh, frequency bandwidth on, on the system we will talk about some features and its benefits uh, quickly on the 5G system uh, Usage, usage of sub 6 gigahertz and millimeter wave spectrum um, that we can have a lot of bandwidths in 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 um, uh, in this spectrum that as compared to uh, the lower frequencies that will give us uh, a higher capacity than or even 100 more time capacity the massive MIMO and beamforming will allow us to enhance our coverage and will allow us also to enhance our capacity uh, the lean carrier design is a new concept uh, we will talk also about it in more details um, uh, about the UE handsets doesn't need to support basically the whole uh, bandwidth for a carrier uh, practically or most commonly now you can go with uh, a 100 megahertz carrier as compared to 20 megahertz carriers question is does all the handsets need to support this 100 megahertz or when you go with uh, LR16 in June 2020 do you need to for example if you have one carrier that support that is 20 uh, that is 200 megahertz do you need the handset to, to support uh, uh, this whole 200 megahertz uh, obviously not because it will be very costly for the UA handset so if one handset supporting part of this carrier uh, based on uh, a receiver bandwidth adaption uh, concept or term in the 5G we'll talk about it uh, later uh, that you don't need to support the whole carrier bandwidth and this is will related to the lean carrier design and this will obviously uh, lower our power consumption for the handsets and reduce our interference flexible frame structure uh, the frame structure just in order not to be confused people who are used to work in LTE as a frame will maintain at uh, as at a 10 millisecond frame uh, subframe will maintain at one millisecond but the number of slots uh, will be different as compared to or will be flexible as compared to uh, the LTE system uh, we used to have two slots per one subframe in the LTE system and every slot is 0.5 millisecond however in 5g you can have one two four one two or four slots per one uh, subframe and then we will have the concept of mini slots uh, that will support the low latency and this will help us a lot in, in lower latency and higher efficiency uh, 
scalable of the MA-based data interface within the same concept. It's based on the uh, uh, subcarrier, uh, different subcarrier spacing, and this also will uh, help us to address the whole diverse spectrum and the big spectrum that we have in the 5G. And in the, numero the numerology that we used to think about, it's a scalable, it's a different uh, numerology as used to have a fixed numerology in the 4G system. And this also will help us to support this multiple bandwidth and spectrum. Advanced channel coding, uh, we will have a new coding um, in, in, as compared to uh, the codes that we used to have in the 4G system, we used to have uh, polar. Uh, we used to have uh, the convolutional code for the control channels and uh, the turbo code for the data channels. That will be changed with a new coding uh, that we will talk about it uh, in this uh, tutorial as well. And this new codes will will help us to support large data block with low complexity. Aggregation of LTE plus 5G carriers will enhance our speed and will will help us in a smooth migration. Um, uh, integrated access and backhaul will help us in greater coverage at uh, the millimeter wave uh, with lower cost. Uh, a flexible connectivity mobility in the session will help us in end-to-end -end services. And uh, being formed for the control and access channels will help us also to enhance our coverage. And um, lastly, the higher spectral usage, and we will talk also in, in soon in more details about this, the spectral uh, efficiency that will help us in uh, enhance our efficiency. 5G bandwidths. Uh, 5G bandwidths uh, will, as we said at the beginning, uh, will be very wide bandwidths and it's up to the operator and each country and each operator um, and the services that it will use and the areas that will that the operator will cover uh, based on this we will decide uh, which frequencies are we are using so we, we we are able to use from starting from 300 megahertz and and the most common one is 700 megahertz up to 300 gigahertz practically speaking most of the operators are using a 3.5 gigahertz uh, but though uh, we will able to use a millimeter waves uh, above 24 gigahertz uh, where we have unlicensed spectrum uh, that we can use it and based on where you need your coverage uh, you will uh, as operator decide uh, which uh, frequency that you are supposed to deploy so if, if, if you if you need um, a deeper coverage um, then you need to use a sub 1 gigahertz and most commonly is uh, 700 megahertz so you will have a very very strong coverage as compared to capacity because obviously we don't have a lot of this frequency but if you are using uh, uh, 1 to 6 gigahertz or sub 6, sub -six gigahertz uh, you will have a fair coverage and fair capacity and this is basically is deployed in the urban and the most common uh, frequencies used here is the 3.5 gigahertz and then the millimeter waves uh, in the 24 gigahertz or anything above uh, uh, 6 gigahertz will be able to give you a very good capacity uh, with a, a wider spectrum that you can use uh, but obviously you will not able to have a lot of coverage and this will be used in in the hot spots so 5g bandwidth in in, in, in many terms are defined as FR1 or frequency range 1 which including all existing and new bands below 6 GHz and FR2 or frequency range 2 that include new bands in the range of 24.2 uh, GHz. In more details uh, uh, frequency range 1 is starting from 450 MHz to 6 GHz and FR2 is uh, for starting from 24 gigahertz up to 52 gigahertz which is a millimeter wave uh, fr1 will use for the low band and mid band uh, 5g uh, use cases and uh, uh, and fr2 will be basically for the millimeter wave bands 26 28 38 and 60 gigahertz bands large amounts of available spectrum are existed in fr2 uh, operation at millimeter wave is seen as one of the major challenge uh, obviously even though with a wide spectrum and this is because it's a very weak uh, spectrum in terms of propagation characteristics uh, which can be easily blocked even by simply human body and that will be a very big problem in terms of coverage uh, later on 
a significant number of trials and actually now we are talking about even uh, commercial uh, uh, 5G deployments started in many countries uh, that use the 3.5 gigahertz uh, but also other operators including Verizon and AT&T started using the millimeter waves uh, for trials in, in hotspots. Carrier bandwidths. Uh, briefly, um, with related to carrier bandwidths, if we're going back to 2G, you will be able to remember that the channel bandwidth for 2G was 200 kilohertz, and then we evolved it to 5 megahertz uh, in, in 3G using CDMA, and then we evolved it to even maximum 20 megahertz for one carrier in LTE. But 5G will be a different story where we can go practically right now uh, with a lot of equipment up to 100 megahertz and it it might increase practically uh, very soon to up to four, 400 megahertz if you have the spectrum uh, problem with with LTE if, if I need for example to deploy 100 megahertz I need to have five carriers each one is uh, is is 20 megahertz one problem of this is a loss big loss of of, of bandwidth because if I use one carrier uh, 20 megahertz in LTE I will have a guard band around 2 megahertz that's equal to almost 10 percent so to use a f 100 megahertz in LTE I will lose around 10 megahertz which is a lot and it's super expensive but in, 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 in 5G if I use 100 megahertz I will only lose 2 uh, megahertz because I can use it efficiently more and I can use up to practically uh, 98 megahertz so 5G wide band carrier is no unnecessary guard bands between carriers LTE have losses of 20 percent for guard bands there's a less common channel overheads in 5G when you have five carriers every carrier will need its own common channel which means that there is a lot of overhead for each carrier for common channel but if you have only one carrier in 5G that is 98 megahertz this means that you need only one common channel and you don't need a lot of common channels for each and every carrier which will avoid a lot of um, overheads and people who work in LTE know very much the headache of doing load balancing between carriers if you have five carriers and whether it's depend on RRC number of users or BRB and then your thresholds and all this headache will be avoided when you have only one carrier uh, and it's 100 megahertz we'll talk about waveforms uh, to talk about waveforms let's go back a little bit to 4G a little back to 4G. 4G using all the DMA in the downlink and SCFDMA over the downlink. Sorry for for the misspelling. I will, I will correct that. The, in the all DMA on the downlink, this is the most common and convenient uh, waveform for uh, 4G. It found to be suitable waveform uh, for the LTE, and I can use subcarrier. Uh, make them orthogonal and can give each users different subcarriers. Question will be why I used uplink SC of DMA um, in the first hand, and the answer is uh, uplink SC of DMA has a very good characteristics of lowering the power consumption for the UE handsets, and we know it's very limited on the uplink. That's why it was very recommended uh, in the uplink to use the SC of DMA instead of the OFDMA and the downlink. Though we have three problems with the uplink SCFDMA. The first one is it's very complex, uh, very complicated to use it for spatial multiplexing. So that's why also uh, you will realize working in LTE that it's very difficult to have a multi layers spatial multiplexing in doubling as compared to the downlink and even though for the 4, 5G still I'm giving I can have 16 layer uh, in, in the downlink as compared to only 4 to 8 layers in the uplink with Huawei AAU5613 um, that is support 64, 60, 64 TTR uh, one second problem for the uplink CFDMA is there is no symmetry uh, between uplink and downlink in this case we will have a problem on the side links that 
uh, is will have a problem on the machine to machine communication and we will talk it about it also later in more details uh, and the last thing is you cannot support contiguous non-contiguous uh, uh, allocation in the uplink using a cfdma which represents uh, a problem to 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 giving uh, a very high speed in in the uplink that's why uplink cfdma is not the basic and only uh, usage in in the in in 5g in 5g we will use all the ma for uplink and all the ma also for downlink but it will have to be complementary for the handset to support scfdma so we will still use scfdma in the 5g in the uplink but this is in case we are using uh, a single carrier and it will be restricted to a single carrier only Talking about Nokia, Nokia said it very clearly that uh, looking here at Nokia document, it said that there will be similar solution in uplink and downlink using the OFDMA and that will allow efficient interference handling side links. And we said side links is a problem with related to machine to machine communication if we use uh, uh, CDMA. OFDMA will allow efficient multiplexing of multi services and single carrier to maximize power amplifier. And then we have talked about it. Uh, Huawei, though, have um, a very good uh feature and they are talking about it clearly i didn't see it in nokia document but it's 3gbb which is a, a filtered ofdm the filtered orthogonal frequency division multiplexing will reduce the guard band that we just talked about in in the bandwidth part that normally we are we having losses of 10 percent of the guard bands using the ofdm but in the filtered ofdm that huawei is talking about we will reduce this guard band to 2 to 5%, which will allow us to have an efficient spectrum utilization up to 95 and 98%. That's all for, is that all for the waveforms? No. Uh, there is a new technology is coming also in the waveforms uh, in, in the 5G. It's not practically been deployed yet, but there is a lot of speak and talk about it. Uh, to go through this new technology, I, I just need to, di to differentiate between the multiple access technologies that uh, it, ha it has been used to deploy in the mobile technologies previously. First one is TDMA, where we use an non-overlapping time slots uh, to, to, to separate users. It's FDMA, uh, that is the baseline of all DMA, and we are using to separate users by subcarriers so every user is assigned a subset of subcarriers and then we have cdma that is used for uh for 3g and basically in cdma the user have using all the frequency and all the time and then just separated by code now there is a new technology or a new multiple access techniques that is very recommended in the 5g which is called noma or non-orthogonal multiple access and it use the user will it, it will be very similar to the CDMA where the user operate in the same band at the same time but in this case he will be separated by the power levels yes by the power levels including look look for this example in OFDMA and um, the users will have uh, uh, the same power as we have a semi-static power control in the LTE system in the OFDMA downlink but in in the non-orthogonal multiple access uh, uh, different users uh, will use the whole frequency and the whole uh, time uh, I mean or, or the same time but it will be dif differentiated by the power levels problem with this it it will need a, a huge power comp a huge computation power for the handset to be able to um, to uh, to differentiate between the UE handsets and the NOMA or the non-orthogonal multiple access <coughs> is basically sorry uh, use a superposition coding and and that that the transmitter that the transmitter is basically depend on successive interference cancellation and the whole point is by 2020 or even 21 2021 2022 they are expecting that the handsets computational power or computational capacity would be much larger to be able to support this new uh, multiple access technology NOMA that it will be good for the 5G. So why NOMA is good for uh, the 5G? Here is another example for in, in of the MA where we UE1 and UE2 have different subcarriers, but in in NOMA um, all the all the mobile will ha all the 
all all the frequencies will be used by one mobile and all the frequencies will be used by the other mobile and but their power levels will be different uh, uh, noma a new technology multiple access technology uh, have its 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 uh, its superiority in in terms of capacity energy efficiency and spectral efficiency for for the 5g uh, but as we said, it requires a high computational power for the handsets, which will be uh, a very uh, challenging in, in, in the 5G technology. So before implementing this, there is a challenge that we just summarize it in. Number one, it requires a high computational power. Number two, the power allocation optimizations remains challenging. And the SIC receiver uh, is very sensitive to the cancellation errors. This is uh, as related to the NOMA or the new multiple access technology that soon will be used for uh, for the 5G. We will talk also again in, in more details about the waveforms, but this is for uh, this initial tutorial. Uh, 5G protocols. Uh, 5G protocols. To we have two different protocols. One protocol in the 4G. Talking about 4G, we have two different protocols. One is used for uh, the control channels, and one is used. Uh, for uh, the data uh, channel. Uh, what is protocol? Uh, 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 protocol uh, is kind of language to talk uh, to different layers. Um, and and the, the protocol is the language that, that leads the layers or let the entities, uh, whether the UE or the E node B, to talk to each other. In, in 5G, there will be no change in the control plane protocol, but there will be change in the data plane. Uh, and we, as, as highlighted this in, in Huawei, uh, very clearly, in, if you see as a control plane protocol, we will have the same four layers, the physical MAC, RLC, BDCB, and RRC, Layer and the Nanax, Nanax stratum. So there will be no change on the control plan uh, uh, stack, but in the user plan or in the data plan, there will be a new protocol which is called SADAP or Service Data Application Protocol. And this is a new protocol that will be used only in case of you have a 5G uh, core network. So in the non standalone, you will, we will not use this uh, SDAP protocol. So this protocol uh, will be responsible for mapping the QS pairs uh, and QS flows for the radio pairs in the 5G system, and it will be only um, uh, only uh, available in case if you have 5G core network. It mentioned also in Nokia documents the CDAP, the SADAP protocol, and it will be only in case you are connected to a 5G core network. So the new thing in the 5G protocols is the SADAP protocol that has never been existed before in the LTE, but it will be a new uh, protocol in the 5G system. Channel coding. We will have also a new channel coding in the 4G, in the 5G system as compared to the 4G. We used to have two uh, different uh, coding. One is for data channel and one for the control channel. In LTE, we are using a turbo coding for the data channel. And by the way, it's used to also for the 3G and it's used for uh, many technologies as well previously. And it used to be very efficient uh, um, um, kind of coding that is used very popularly in, in different industries. In the control channels, we are using convolutional coding in the LTE, but not anymore. In new radio, we will replace the turbo coding with LDBC or low, um, low data parity check, and uh, we will replace the convolutional coding with a polar coding. The LDBC coding and the data channel will give us a faster speed and the polar coding will give us a more robust signal. However, we have said this very clearly that if you see the LDBC code, it, it will give you uh, a higher efficiency and a higher speed uh, decoding speed as compared to the turbo coding that uh, were previously used in LTE. And in, in the uh, control uh, channel, we will use a new 
uh, polar code that it's much better because it require a lower uh, SNR in the 5G and its transmission efficiency is even much better as compared to the convolutional code in Huawei. In Nokia, they are saying the same thing and it's 3GBB so there will be used for the new LDBC and the new polar code instead of the turbo code that we used as very common uh, in, in the 4G system and Nokia has highlighted that the LDBC has a clear benefit over turbo uh, and some over polar for implementation complexity. There is a lot to, di to discuss also about the coding and we will have a specific um, uh, orchestra sessions also for more details about this but um, just for uh, the lack of time uh, we will go faster. Uh, this is some uh, keynotes uh, for the coding to be uh, included and to be studied if you, if you need to read more uh, details about the coding. Uh, 